Welcome to this presentation on an application of the theories of Walter Russell's cosmology. If Walter Russell's cosmology holds up, then it must be able to explain common phenomena. Here we have a, an uncharged battery. The battery is completely dead and incapable of doing any work. We could say that in applying Walter's cosmology, it's at a period of rest in its life cycle. Now, if we charge the battery, that is, divide the undivided rest condition, and charge the battery into its positive anode condition and its simultaneous negative cathode uh, side, we have now established a, a polar, a polarized state across the battery. Now, in the as a result of that division, we have a direction away from the cathode center, the overall cathode center, extending out to the left towards the anode, and we have a direction from that cathode center extending out to the right, which is also a cathode. It's a positive um, cathode, but in the overall sense of the uh, wave function, we see a, a polarity across the whole battery. So the question is, what is the mechanism by which this battery will discharge itself? I'm sure we've all been taught that with a polarized battery, what, what is happening is we have an accumulation of electrons at the, uh, at the cathode, which is why it has uh, the negative charge. And that accumulation of electrons has also simultaneously caused a deficiency of electrons at the positive anode. And so therefore, that's why the anode is positive. And when the uh, circuit is reconnected, we get a, a flowback of those uh, surplus electrons from the uh, cathode back to the anode via the circuit. And likewise, we get a flow of positive holes, if you like, from the, um, uh, from the anode back to the cathode. And certainly, if anybody is describing PNN junctions in um, um, electronics, that is the way PNN junctions are certainly described. Uh, we have electrons flowing in one direction and positive holes flowing in the opposite direction. And this is a commonly held belief right across the sciences from chemistry to physics to electronics, that this is in fact what happens uh, when um, electricity flows, whether it be uh, from a, in a battery or whether it's through a, a network an electrical network um, for an entire country. Now, from uh, what we've learned of Walter's theory, we know that this idea is completely wrong. There is no, uh, no electrons to flow in the first place, and um, the flow is not as described from a, a, a left to right and a right to left flow as described in that diagram there. So if it is true that within the wave lies the secret of all creation, then his wave theory has to be able to explain the correct mechanism of discharge within this polarized state. Now, as we described in the explanation on the wave, we know that the wave is built up in a radial fashion. That is compression from the outside towards an internal hub and subsequently then expansion from that hub back out to the uh, wheel rim. So there is a radial um, aspect to uh, the construction of the universe. Now, the cathode holds within, inside itself the imbalanced condition necessary to rebalance itself. And so, so what we're saying is that in the life cycle of man, as he uh, increases his vitality from birth until the age of 40, he has within him the ability to die. Death is within him continuously. And so that, that death would be expressed if centrifugal force is allowed to express itself. But the whole purpose of vitality is to keep that centrifugal force in check by having a superior centripetal force. 
and that is what vitality is. It's an it's an excess of centripetal force over the the willingness of centrifugal force to express itself. So if we just look at the left hand side of the diagram for a second and consider the anode only, what we're saying is that contained inside within the compression of the anode lies the exact dimension of um, compression to rebalance the cathode on the far side. They're, all, they're a mirror image almost of each other. And the only thing that's stopping that from, from unwinding is the compressive force on the anode side. But likewise too, on the right hand side of the, um, the battery, which is the, uh, the cathode side, it too is a generative uh, expression. And it too it is compressing from the outside inwards, creating the opposite effect of the anode. And it too has within it the ability to die or unwind at any moment. So on the left hand side of the battery, we have a male expression. And completely separate from that, we have a female expression on the right hand side. However, they are both intrinsically interlinked in the setup for the battery. So once the battery is included in a circuit, discharge of the battery begins. But what is actually happening is that on the cathode side only, which is the right hand side, from within the cathode itself, it unwinds in exactly the same measure as on the right hand side, the anode unwinds. They are two opposite ends of a perfectly balanced uh, seesaw, but they are unwinding within themselves. There is no exchange of um, potential from one side to the other. In their creation, they have contained within them, almost hidden, the exact dimension of potential that the other expressed. And so we can say that the cathode effectively turns itself inside out to release the locked in anode potential that was on the inside of the cathode. And on the other side also, the anode turns itself inside out to release the locked in cathode potential that was locked inside it. And they each unwind like two uh, watch springs or clock springs unwinding um, in unison but separate from each other. Now we describe this in, in terms of the uh, wave field, but if we just look at the uh, the blue arrow there, for example, and uh, consider its its um, division half of the uh, cycle um, is equivalent to moving from the zero position up to the plus plus four position. But the um, wave is a continuous function. And in order for it to be a continuous function, what appears to happen is that, that at that point, the uh, positive generative expression turns itself inside out and becomes a, a, a radiative expression of itself. So that's equivalent, the blue arrow is equivalent of in a man's life cycle from zero to 40. And the red arrow indicates the period in time from 40 years of age to 80, where unwinding and expansion is predominant. And we also then get the uh, opposing flow going in the opposite direction from the anode to the cathode. Don't worry too much about the colors that I've used. They're just there to indicate that uh, a change takes place as the uh, transition of the wave moves from one side of the uh, dividing plane of zero potential to the other. But the color itself is not that important. And what happens then is we appear to have set up this um, internal dynamic within the battery itself in that um, as the uh, cathode is unwinding, it's exactly equivalent to the um, to what was charged up on the um, anode side. And likewise, as the um, anode is unwinding, it is exactly equivalent to the uh, amount of potential that was used to charge the um, cathode side of the battery. Now each side is unwinding itself 
So the anode is unwinding within itself and the cathode is unwinding within itself, but they need each other to be connected so that they can have that symbiotic interdependence on one another. Because what we are, what is internally established here is a system of rhythmic balance interchange. If you think of the disturbance that occurs on the surface of calm water, where uh, on the left side you might get a peak and adjacent to it on the right side you'll get a trough. Now, as through the course of rhythmic balance interchange, they, they swap each other around so that what was the uh, um, peak will become a trough and what was the trough will become a peak. But the interim period between those two extreme conditions involves the peak unwinding within itself and likewise the trough um, unwinding uh, within itself to gain that um, rest position where they are exactly balanced analogous to a seesaw being horizontal to the ground. Now, if you would like to do some further reading and investigation into the wave field and the cubic wave field structure of um, Walter Russell, I'll leave a link to the above website in the show notes below.